All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And most of you are not going to want to miss this video, whether you're a fan of the machine or whether you're not. Uh, we create came on the scene last year with their original uh, vision machine. And guys, I, I liked the, the majority of the machine when they first came out with the vision. It was a great little starter machine for people, but I like using light burn. So for me, it kind of, you know, it, it really wasn't what I wanted. Uh, and using it in conjunction with light burn, if you were an experienced user like myself, was a little bit of a pain. Uh, that was my biggest complaints that I gave to WeCreate. And I've been, you know, kind of off and on talking with them for the past year or so about the complaints I had with the machine. And guys, they fixed my complaints. The only thing, guys, and I'm like I said, I, the only thing right now that they're still working on is in light burn, the camera is still not connecting because the way theirs works, it goes through the motherboard. And so the camera still does not work in light burn, but I can tell you that it functions. Every other option on it functions through light burn, except for the camera. I've got some footage that I'm going to be showing you. I'll be running it with light burn. But right now, guys, I'm going to drop you down into the we create software and we're just going to discuss it and i'm going to show you around the the latest version of software which is required to run this machine so uh be right back and we're going to get started All right, guys, first off, uh, there's going to be a new software required. Uh, you can see this software is a version 2.0.2. .2. Uh, other than that, I'm running the latest version of the firmware for this machine. Uh, this, like I said, this is an early machine, so there may be some changes to the software or firmware, but so far it seems like they've got most of the stuff handled. The only thing that I've found that, that I think needs to be adjusted so far is when you, when you send a cutout, the machine wants to, it forgets its focus and goes all the way back up. I think maybe that maybe that you will see a fix for that, but guys, I'm going to show you how it works real quick. And uh, then we're going to run through a little bit of light burn, but once you put the design in the workspace, you've got it located where you want it to be located. You just hit the auto focus button. You'll notice the lights dim inside the machine. I'm guessing. So that's don't, they don't interfere with the uh, measuring apparatus that they use, which is probably light based because there is no probe or anything. Uh, it's going to go down. It's going to take measurements. It's going to adjust the focal length of the laser. And then once it does that, it'll return back to that back left corner over there and get out of the way. And you'll notice the lights pick back up. So it is now capturing another image based on that last focus because the focus of the material does affect image accuracy. So we're going to go ahead and send that out and get that cut to go. You'll see right here, it's going to give you an estimated time. And then I'm going to hit CN. Not a fan of the button with any of the newer machines, but here we go. As you can see, it's, it's pretty quick. It's relatively quiet. For those guys that like the noise discipline of machines, when it's cutting, it is a little louder. It's a 40 watt and it's got a big fan in the back of it. So it's, it's going to be a little louder. Uh, but once the machine cuts, you'll notice it's raising up. I think that's probably something that'll get some adjustment in the next couple of firmware updates or software updates, uh, because now you've got to refocus if you decide to send another cut. That's that's only the only thing that uh, that I've found so far that's a little uh, not to my liking. All right, guys. So that's the native software. You kind of expect that to work with the machine, but. Let's bounce over into light burn and I'm just going to show you a couple of little motions and then we'll save the rest of the videos for later. All right, guys. So over here in light burn, uh, you have macros as with most of the machines that aren't natively set up to operate with light burn macros do the work. So that was the focus macro. That's the frame macro uh, or the frame option. <laughs> it's not really a macro. And then, of course, we're going to cut. And it actually works really quick in Lightburn. I was kind of expecting a little bit of a delay because it's, you know, it's working with Lightburn, not with its uh, intended software. But it's really responsive. The speed and power tests that I've done so far, uh, you're looking at with this material, which is quarter inch Luon, I'm getting really good drops at 13 millimeters per second. Sometimes uh, you hit those little glue pockets. That might not be enough, but 
it'll actually get up to 15 and uh but I'm, I'm staying with 13 for now and so far i've only had one little really thick glue pocket that was even even caused a bit of a snag so that's pretty good cutting power for a 40 watt diode but you can see it's running flawlessly in light burn everything works well as it should except for the camera and uh like i said i spoke with we creates uh folks and they're saying that the camera is one of those things that they're working on but you know in typical clack shack fashion don't be surprised if there doesn't end up one of my favorite little cameras mounted underneath that uh cover right there so i'm just running several frames and cuts just you know seeing how consistent it works seeing if i get any errors and so far tonight guys i've been running it mostly with light burn haven't had any problems i've done speed and power tests uh, as far as cutting as well as engraving, no, no problems so far. Like I said, the camera is the only little hiccup. Uh, but we're going to do a engraving test real quick and just get you out of here and we'll have more content coming soon, guys. All right, because this is an engraving, it's going to take a minute, guys. I'm running this in two times speed. I'm um, just moving it around, trying to find me a little spot on the machine that is not covered up. And I will tell you this, uh, I do it a pretty good job of placing it using the feed from my overhead camera. So, you know, yeah, if I can get me a uh, light burn camera in there, it'll be much, much better. But we're going to clip through some of this uh, so I can show you the finished results. Uh, this was intended to be a very short, uh, just kind of a sneak peek into what we create is offering with the latest machine so let's fast forward this all right so it's a few seconds later and i've sped the uh, video back down to normal speed uh as you can see i was running this at like 200 millimeters a second on the engrave turns out that might have been a bit hot for this machine so uh you'll see then just a second it's a little crispy so <laughs> i'm gonna have to turn the power down or the speed up uh, but the good news is there is no disputing that it is engraved. Uh, it's a recessed engrave. Come out looking good. And as you can see, the cut dropped it with no issues at 13 millimeters a second. All right, guys. So I haven't really had a lot of time to do much testing with it. It just come off the truck today. Uh, but I've, I've, so far, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, there are, like I said, there, I'm sure there are going to be little things that I'm going to want tweaked, whether it's just my personal preference or whether it's actually a problem. We'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, but I don't want to do a full-blown, too in-depth into it until I've learned the machine a little better. I'll be dropping a few little niblets of uh, information here and there, but I just wanted to introduce you to it and let you know that I do have one. Uh, for you guys that have been asking me if I was going to be getting the 40 watt, yeah, I'm getting it. So uh, stay tuned if you're interested in content about the machine. I do think that We Create has gotten one step closer to getting my seal of approval for a machine. Uh, I like the other one. Like I said, it was the software was the limitation and not being able to use Lightburn. Uh, but as you saw in the video, uh, it works in Lightburn. I still got to work through that camera issue. They're working on it. I'm going to be probably working on it, but we'll get past that. So if you want to keep up with the machine, guys, and see what comes next, hit that button down below and be sure to subscribe. And until next time, be safe and have a good day.